All right, fine, I'll finish it. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead bringing you part three and the final installment of my Star-Lord build. So today's video is gonna have a lot of cool little segments, a lot of tips and tricks, basically my whole process of how I painted Star-Lord, how I weathered Star-Lord, adding the eye lenses, adding LEDs, everything chock full of information, lots and lots of good tidbits in here, covering the whole build beginning to end and how I got Star-Lord to go from this to this. Well, that was pretty cool. We're gonna get started into the next part of the video. Got the whole build here, how I got this Star-Lord mask to look like this and come to be. So without any further ado, let's get into part three. Let's go. So now that the helmet is all sanded, prepped, wiped down and ready to go, we can add base coat. So for my base coat, I am adding a satin aluminum metallic. And what this is gonna do is help manipulate the look of just raw metal. In this helmet, we're gonna have some chips and some wear and tear. So that'll really help mimic and make it look like the paint's been stripped off and the metal showing. When doing a base coat, you don't always have to do gloss. It's a big mistake that many people make. Whenever you add a gloss from a rattle can, you're always gonna add orange peel. So by using this satin, it has less solvents in it and there's a lower shrink rate. So won't give you that orange peel and really affect your top layers. Regardless of the paint you're using, always do light multiple coats. It's the best way to apply your base coat. All right, now getting into masking. So whether it is a base, mid, or top coat, and you have to do any sort of masking, two very important things is you always want to give yourself more time than less. I, at a minimum, always wait 24 to 30 hours before I do any sort of taping. So here I waited about 30 hours just to be safe. Another very important thing is to make sure you have the right tape. A lot of time people think painter's tape is fine and that's not. Painter's tape is made for enamel paint, oil-based paint, latex paint that's used on the interior of homes. A lot of times if you use that on you know, any sort of 3D print where you're using an acrylic enamel or any automotive PPG paint, you're gonna run into issues. So make sure you're using the right tape. Here you can see I'm using a 3M automotive blend and it worked out absolutely great. So again, I'm going through using a combination of tape and old magazines and things like that in sharing coverage and getting it ready for paint. Here now adding the gold sections to the Star-Lord helmet. One very important tip, when you are painting on top of pre-existing paint, always do light multiple coats. If you put the paint on too thick or too heavy and the underlying base coat isn't fully cured, it can reactivate those solvents in the paint, causing it to shrink faster, you'll get wrinkling, you'll get frying, and you'll have to do the whole section over. So let's get into a little bit of weathering. So this is my taping technique uh, that just basically shows wear and tear and, and battle damage in a sense to a helmet. So what we're doing here is just going through and taking that same green automotive tape from before and we're just ripping off little patterns, just kind of placing them in, in certain areas in the helmet where it may look like there's wear and tear, maybe something exploded in front of his face and took some of the paint off. And this is a really cool technique because especially with that silver uh, underlying base coat, it's gonna make it look like the paint was stripped off and the, the bare metal is showing. So it adds a lot of depth and a lot of character to the helmet. So really all you have to do is kind of look at the helmet and determine, okay, what are some high impact zones? Where maybe would these chips occur, you know? And so all I'm doing is going through, placing them in certain areas that I think that they'll look good. The cool thing with using the masking tape is you kind of reposition it and move it around wherever you want to. But after you get all that tape set up, we gotta do a little bit more taping. So let's go. A quick masking tip here if you're trying to get clean, precise, defined lines in between paneling where you need to mask off and you need to paint. First, lay down your paint and then take a plastic razor blade and just kind of go over the channel. Kind of work the tape in that groove where you want to separate it to be masked off and the panel to be painted. Then take a fresh clean razor blade and very gently just kind of drag the razor blade over the area where that channel is, that kind of groove that you made with the plastic razor blade. Don't push too hard, don't dig into it, don't gouge it, just gently drag it over there and the fresh razor blade will slice the tape and you can peel it right off. Do it on anywhere that is required where you're masking off and again, just be very gentle with the razor blade. This is not a rush process, you don't wanna be digging it in or applying too much pressure because you can definitely mess up the paint. You can see here that it pulls right off and then take your plastic razor blade and go back over the area just to make sure it's nice and clean and defined. 
Continue masking the off where needed and continue the procedure as directed. Using things like I stated, the plastic razor blade, fresh razor blade, uh, little plastic panel tools and things like tweezers can really help you get in those nooks and crannies and get everything clean and precise. Continue masking off the helmet. Go over and double check everything. Make sure everything is clean and masked off the way you want it, that the tape is nice and precise, and then continue with your additional top coats again. Light multiple coats, don't go too heavy. Make sure you're getting all the areas front to back, top to bottom. Once the helmet is set for anywhere from three to four hours, depending on what your temperature is, go ahead and start removing the tape. Even though this is an automotive tape and it's okay for this paint, we don't want to leave it on longer than need be. So using something like a plastic set of tweezers to help get the tape off, get it out of those intricate areas, nooks and crannies can really pay dividends. But just take your time, be patient, get all the tape off, and you'll be ready for the next process in the helmet. On to my grunging process of the helmet. So uh, what we're doing here is just adding a little bit of uh, grunge to Star Lord's helmet here. It's gonna furthermore the weather process of the helmet, just make it look like it's dirty and a little bit more beat up and really add a cool effect to it. What we're using here is oil-based paint and what's called mineral spirits. Now, mineral spirits is a solvent and understand it is a thinner. So before you do this process, you wanna let your helmet sit for a minimum of 72 hours, depending if it's a hot or cold you know, atmosphere, you may wanna wait even longer. But essentially what we're doing is applying the black paint to kind of look like dirt and grime and we're thinning it down with the mineral spirits. All we're using here is a microfiber towel and just kind of gently dabbing it and blending it in. So uh, not really applying a lot of pressure, just kind of working it into the, the substrate, kind of working it in the pores of the paint. And it is a slow and steady process. You kind of have to do multiple coats, uh, but it really does give a, a, a super unique look to the helmet. Here I'm using a Q-tip going, trying to get it in all the crevices and nooks and the crannies really to kind of show that grime and gunk buildup. But let me keep doing some coats here. I'll show you guys some updates. And then in the next slide here, I'm gonna furthermore explain this process a little bit more in depth. Just finished the grunging up or the weathering of the Star-Lord helmet here. For the most part, I might do a couple touch-ups, but uh, overall, it looks really good. I just like using this technique simply because there's just so much more control there. You know, if you don't really like the way something's looking, you can grab some mineral spirits and literally just wipe it away. A technique that I've used, take a towel, put like maybe a, a pea-sized dot in there, and then just kind of mix it in with the mineral spirits. So I have the mineral spirits in this bottle. So what I do is I kind of just mix it all together with my gloves on and I get this black, it's just all black towel. And uh, the way I got this to look like this is basically by just doing splotches. So you just kind of take it and just kind of go through, basically just tap it all the way around and then I'll come with a cleaner towel and just tap after it. Um, and like I said, what's cool is you can change that. If you put it on too heavy or too light, there really is no limit to the effect that you can get with this method. You're gonna use a ton of towels. Um, I had a couple more, I think I already threw them out here. Um, but just about, I just take a microfiber towel, I just kind of chop it up. Um, I really like this method, that's how I got that. Just, you know, it doesn't really look like there's any wipes or anything, it just looks like it's all just kind of uniformed and just, just grungy. In here, I'm gonna blend down a little bit more. Um, I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit though. You can let your imagination run wild when you do this method. And I think that's the coolest thing is you could line up a hundred of these helmets and every single one of them are gonna look different. So the same way that I do the weathering with the tape, I just tear off the piece of tape and whatever pattern it comes in, you can make your own patterns, do whatever. Uh, and another reason I really like this too is because I'm really able to get some grime those areas where the it looks like the paint's kind of chipped off so i think that really adds to the effect if you're looking for something with more control uh than airbrushing and maybe you're not as well versed in airbrushing this is a great option the results you know in my opinion are you know i don't want to say second to none but pretty darn good if you ask me so i'm gonna let star lord sit here for a little bit then i'm gonna give him a final wipe down only thing i have left to do on here you've probably seen i installed the pipes i just used some e6000 and glued the lower pipes and the top pipes in place. All we have left are the back pipes here. Uh, so I am gonna have to weather those and then uh, glue those in place. But that's all that's left on the front part of the helmet. I do have the back helmet that I have to uh, paint and weather down. So I'm gonna get started on that right now. So let's go.
Getting into how I did the lenses on the Star-Lord helmet. A very common color, like red, it was, it was actually quite easy. You know, if you're getting into custom colors, you may have to look into vinyl. Red, it was super easy, uh, simple Amazon search. And I pulled up these sheets right here. And these actually come in a, uh, a bag with uh, red and green, because these are actually for projectors to change the color of your bulbs. Still a protective film on here right now, so it doesn't look quite as clear, but when you peel it off, it's absolutely crystal clear. You can see how glossy these are. I just took a piece of paper, kind of put it on the inside here, and then traced it very carefully. And uh, once I got that template, uh, I put some painter's tape. You can still see there's some on here. And then I put that template on here, traced it, and cut it out. Once you get them to the exact size they fit in quite nice now i don't know if you can see or not but there's actually like a, a ridge or a brim on the inside of the eye the best way to go about doing this i don't recommend using super glue because it can create that haze i don't recommend using hot glue because it just dries way too quick e6000 so what i did is i actually kept the helmet facing up like this and I did just three dots of E6000, one here, one here, and one here. And you can do more. I just didn't want to put too much on to where you could see it through the lens. Very gently kind of lowered and placed the cover on there. And after it sat for about an hour, it was good to go. And then I really didn't mess with it the rest of the day, but it came out absolutely great. You can see right through them. I highly recommend using E6000 or some sort of clear Gorilla Glue. Pretty simple. Just get a piece of paper, kind of fit it on there, trace it with a marker, cut that out, take that template that you got, put it on your red film here, uh, throw some painter's tape on, trace that on there, cut it out, boom, fit it, good to go. Like I said, you may have to do some trimming because you want it to be, you know, completely flat. You don't want it bowing or, or there, there's a good shot right there. And you can actually kind of see where I put some, one of the pieces of glue right there. So it's generally pretty flat. There's really not any bowing or any curvature to it. You want it just completely flat. So that is really my tutorial or, or easy recommendation for doing these. Another thing I wanna talk about and show you is the padding for the helmet. This is actually, um, it's a sports slash motorcycle helmet padding kit uh, as seen here in that picture. Again, you can get it right on Amazon. I like these a ton because you can see that there's actually, uh, there's Velcro and you can actually remove these uh, if you want. So if you need to move these, adjust these, like I did even cut these, um, these stick on here very well. Just clean your PLA uh, with some rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and they stick just absolutely perfect. So with mine, it's just, I kind of put it, uh, put this helmet on my head and then seen where I needed additional support. Uh, put it in there temporarily, seen how it worked and then just did my final fitment for the, uh, for the padding. Obviously I've got a piece right here up in the forehead. I've got some pieces on the side and you can cut these and kind of shape these and mold these. I really recommend this padding. It's super comfortable. The, these uh, Velcro adhesive backs stick right on there. Absolutely perfect. Much better than using uh, Eva foam. A link will be in the description. You kind of seen a quick shot of it there, but yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Just stick those uh, Velcro adhesive backs on and just put them wherever you want. And like I said, that's absolutely fantastic. So if you ever need to move them, anything ever gets adjusted, you can just move uh, just peel them off with the Velcro, uh, stick them back on. Whereas if you hot glue them, you might be uh, in for, you know, heating stuff up and leaving things all messy and everything. So uh, that's pretty much it. Next thing we're going to do here is show you how I did the light up eyes for the Star-Lord helmet. Moving on to the LED eyes here, put in the Star-Lord helmet. So what we basically used here were these LED flexible strips. You can see that they light up here and uh, these are completely flexible. You can bend them in pretty much any shape that you want or contour. Um, first things first, take this little heat shrink cover off. We're not really gonna need that. Remove that and then what you're gonna wanna do is kind of size it up and see how big it is. This strip is actually, you can cut it um, to a certain length. It's every three LEDs. So you wanna be really careful not to cut it too short because if you cut it too short, the other two LEDs won't work. So once you get a general size uh, just kind of measure it up look and see make sure it lines within uh, that every third corresponding LED bar there and then just go ahead and cut it 
Once you have the LED strip cut to the proper length, just double check and make sure that it lights up and it does. The great thing about these LED lights is that they're pre-wired, they have the resistors and everything in them. So once we get the right size here, we can just go ahead and wire it up. So double check the size that you need because you're gonna have to glue this together. We need it to go in a circle to go around the eyes. So you can see right where I need. So trim the little access off there. We want the, the ring nice and tight. Go ahead and double check your size, uh, remove that adhesive back, and then just put a little bit of glue on there. I like using super glue because it obviously cures the fastest. Um, you can use whatever other glue you want, but we want something that is just quick drying and that won't mess up the contour or it sitting in basically the channel of the eye holes in the Star-Lord helmet. Do a quick check here, uh, kind of line it up where you think you're gonna glue it and make sure it looks good. You can see we have this piece that kind of protrudes out because we had to overlap it to fit. So what I did is kind of put that more up towards the top and kind of bent it up a little bit more. There's a little bit more room at the top of the eye channel where you can kind of tuck and just form it more towards that, I guess, gap you could say in the eye socket. But you can see here that both of them are in place. Don't put a ton of glue in the actual channel because you want the light to sit flush. What I did is just did a little bit of glue to hold it in place and then did a nice bead of glue around the whole eye socket to really get it to sit nice and clean and flush. After that, go ahead and just do a test fitting and a test look. Wire up the battery, make sure the eyes are looking good, sequential and even, and they do look pretty awesome right here. Once you verify that the LEDs are nice and flush in the eye, you can go ahead and add some more glue. Just do that nice bead of hot glue around. Don't really try to put it on the inside because you can definitely get it on the lens and mess it up. Here you can see I glued the eyes in place. It's pretty clean and I also started combining the wires and hiding those with hot glue. Just connect the red to the red and the black to the black and we're gonna run that over to our power source. So here you can see I was just using the hot glue to kind of guide the wire over and I found that the best place to put the power source, which is just a small battery and the switch I'm going to use off to the right. Here's the battery that I'm using. It's nice and small. It will conceal nice, you know, off to the right side of the helmet. It kind of goes under the padding so I know that it won't hit my ear or get in the way. So this little area here is the best place to put the switch and the power source. Then start guiding the wires over to the corner where the switch and the battery is going to be and fasten it down with hot glue. Now initially I was going to use a potentiometer. This is a cool tool because it actually brightens and dims the lights, but unfortunately it wouldn't fit. It was just too big. You can see the size here. So it just, it would stick out and I just wouldn't be able to fit it in that good. It's just too big of a piece. Now they do make smaller ones, so I may add that down the road. It's a really simple uh, idea and install here. This is actually, it controls the speed of a motor, but it will work with lights too. You can see you have a DC in and then essentially motor is DC out. So you just wire the positive and the negative into this and you'll be able to control the brightness of your LEDs. Let me wire this up real quick here and give you an example of how a potentiometer works and how it might work for your helmet. Wiring this up is quite simple. At the top of the switch, it says DC in. All you have to do is take the negative terminal from the battery and the positive terminal from the battery and wire those into the matching labels. Then where it says motor, that's gonna go to the LED. So follow the same suit. Negative goes to negative, positive goes to positive. Once you have that wired up, you can see here by turning the knob, you'll be able to adjust the brightness of the LED. This is really a great feature because sometimes when you install those LED eyes or certain things and you turn them on, you're basically blinded and can't see. So by wiring up a potentiometer, you'll be able to dim that and see out of your helmet a lot easier. This is the switch we are going to use though. It's a basic latching switch and installation is quite simple. All we're going to do is run the positive from the battery on one side and then the other side run the positive to the LED. The ground wires from the LED get wired directly to the ground on the battery. There's no switch needed for that. All this switch is doing is kind of interrupting the positive flow from the battery to the LEDs. Once you verify that your switch is working, you can go ahead and glue everything in place. The battery, the switch, everything, and kind of clean up any wires that need to be hidden. You can see here using the hot glue, it is a nice little trick to just kind of conceal the wires and make sure everything's nice and tight and in place. You can see that the eyes work pretty awesome. They uh, are very sequential, I guess you could say. Again, you want to make sure that everything looks nice and clean. Uh, Lucas got to wipe some fingerprints off there. The switch, you can't even really tell. It's nice and hidden and concealed under the helmet. Again, you want to take that extra time just to make sure all your bits and pieces are hidden and it makes the helmet look uniform and nothing looks out of place.
What do you think, guys? Pretty cool? Not too bad. Yeah. Uh, that is a wrap on part three. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. A lot of fun things in there, a lot of tips, a lot of tricks. Basically everything that I used, my own certain ways to get this helmet to, to look like this. And like I said, obviously it's my own spin. Uh, I always do that with all my builds. Uh, but lots of good information here. So whether you're trying to build a cinematic Star-Lord, the old school, or maybe the new one, the T'Challa version and the What If series, uh, a lot of cool little points and tips and tricks in here to get your helmets really looking awesome. And, you know, I'll say it, every helmet I do, each one turns into being my next favorite. But I really did enjoy this build. You know, a lot of people think that weathering helmets, it's it's easy. You can skip steps and it's okay if there's layer lines. I mean, there are no layer lines in this helmet. I didn't skip any steps in this. And really, when you get into weathering and mimicking and making things look like they've been beat up and just destroyed and worn for years and years and years, there's no really easy way around it. It actually takes a lot more work to get you know certain things to look certain ways. And I definitely think I nailed it with this helmet. Go ahead and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of the helmet. Uh, if you have any questions on the build, obviously feel free to drop me a comment. You know, I'll answer you back. If you're on the Discord, shoot me a comment or drop me a question. Again, I like to keep in contact with everyone. I try to be as informative as possible. If you guys ever have any questions, just drop me a line. If you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. I appreciate all your guys' comments, feedback, your likes, everything that you're doing. Keep on doing it. The channel is just going to keep growing. If you're not a subscriber and you're enjoying my builds, you like all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, Disney, Funko Pops, collectibles, all the stuff that we're doing here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We got a lot more content on the way, a lot more builds, and a lot more fun things to see. Like always, guys, I will leave the links in the description for all of the products I use. That way, if you're trying to build a Star-Lord helmet or you're trying to do something similar, you'll have all these products right at your fingertips. Get all those products, go out there, build your own Star-Lord helmet or whatever you're working on. Be sure to email it to me so I can check it out, see what you guys are working on, and let me know that all my tutorials and all my tips got your helmet where it needed to be. That's it for now, guys. I'm done. I'm going to get working on the next thing. Filler Primer Test Part 2. I am wrapping it up. Finally, 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 it is here. So I'm currently editing that, getting that ready for the next video. So that's going to be the next one. After that, we're moving on to Thanos. I know you guys are excited for that one. I'm diligently working here, trying to get these videos knocked out for you guys so you guys can check them out and it can help you in all your 3D prints. That's a wrap on Starlord Part 3. Drop me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. Click that notification bell. And until next time, DW out. Later.